Hello, and welcome to uh, Learn to Code Chapter Functions, a fifth activity called Nesting Patterns. All right, nesting Patterns. All right, our goal today is pretty simple, really. We just want to learn and illustrate and practice this idea that we can call a function from within another function. It's a very powerful idea. Uh, and this uh, activity explains that up until now, the functions we've defined have only called existing commands, such as move forward and collect gem. And uh, we can actually go beyond that, and we can define a function ourselves, maybe a turnaround function, and we can call that function within another function that we write. Uh, so uh, that's very, uh, again, powerful because it lets us build up increasingly complex increasingly complex functions by compositing or building up uh, simpler simpler procedures. Okay, This idea is called uh, procedural composition, where we're going to take some simple procedures, uh, add them together, or run them one after another, and build up a more complex procedure. Okay, So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this here. And what this says to do is that we should first define a solve stair function. Solve stair function is right down here solve stair uh, by calling turnaround inside of it. And if we look up here, function turnaround is written for us. And turnaround, we've written these our, ourselves before, is made up of a turn left and a turn left. Okay, So uh, the, the instructions say, well, we should solve stair uh, by calling a turnaround function. So I'll go ahead and add this in here, turnaround. Okay, so now the only thing solve stair does is turn around. Okay, uh, that's not very useful, so we should really think about what this means to solve a stair. Okay, let's look at the puzzle now. And this puzzle has four sets of stairs uh, all surrounding bite, okay, uh, with a gem on the top of each stair. And we need to collect all four gems, all right? So we're facing this particular stair right now, and there's a gem in front of us at the top. So I suggest that maybe our solve stair uh, problem should go up, uh, get that gem, and then walk back down, OK? All right, so uh, let's go ahead and try that. So our solve stair should, we said it should move forward. So I'm going to move forward. I'm going to move forward. We're going to collect the gem that's up there. And then we're going to turn around. Okay. And then we want to walk back down the stairs so that we're ready to go get some more gems. Okay. So that's another move forward. All right. So as, as always, I'd like to not get too much code written before we try this out. So we're going to call solve stair right here and see if he solves the stair in front of him. And solve stair is this abstract idea that means walk up a stair that's in front of me and get a gem. Okay. All right. Let's see if he does that. He should walk up a stair, get a get a gem, and walk back down. Okay. Good. He definitely solved the stair. He solved the stair. Um, in fact, we can be well on our way to solving this puzzle if we go ahead and um, call solve stair again. He'll pick up another puzzle. I'm sorry, he'll pick up another gem. Okay, so let's have him do two of these solve stair and then solve stair. Okay. All right, good. Now, uh, what's going to happen if we call solve stair again to pick up another gem? Is it going to work? Well, let's try it. Solve stair three times. Hopefully, this will get three gems. Solve stair, remember, is an abstract idea that says, Walk up the stairs that's in front of you, grab the gem, and come back down. Okay, he comes back down. 
Now he's going to call solve stair again, and uh-oh, no gem to get. All right, so if we keep calling solve stair over and over like this, uh, we're not going to get all these gems because we just keep coming down um, to this, uh, keep coming up this platform here, and then we end up at the bottom of the stairs turned facing the other way every time. All right. So, uh, well, we're going to need to be a little more clever about this so that he gets all four gems. You have any ideas? Okay, I have a possible idea. Um, two possible ideas, actually. So, the first idea is uh, maybe our solve stair, when he comes back down the stair, in fact, I'm just going to run this solve stair just one time here. Okay, so we're just going to run solve stair one time, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so when he comes back down, he's facing away from the stair he took care of, right? And that's actually pretty good, because we know we don't want him to go back and try to get that one again. But really, let's try to be a little bit more organized about this, and maybe will go around all the sides of the square in order. So we'll pick up this gem first that we just picked up, and then this gem to our left, and then this gem ahead of us, and then this gem to the right of us. So if we do that in that kind of an order, we can be a little bit more organized about this. All right, so in order to do that, uh, once we come back down from solve stair, we want to then turn to the left. So turn left, and then we'll be facing the gem to the left of us. So we can call solve stair, and let's just make sure this works. I'm pretty sure this is going to work, but what I really want to know is when we come down from picking up this gem here, which way do we have to turn? Okay coming down, we're facing away, and it looks like we're going to need to turn left again to pick up the next gem. So let's add that, turn left, solve stair, and I'm going to go ahead and guess here that if we want to uh, pick up the next one, we're going to say turn left and solve stair. I think there's a pretty high likelihood that we're, that, that will, will, will grab all the gems. So let's run this one. He moves up the stair in front of him and solves that stair. Turns left and is going to solve the stair in front of him. Comes back down. And he's going to solve the stair in front of him. Comes back down and he's going to turn left again. And I think that's going to work out just fine. Turn to the left and solve the stair in front of him. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, good. So as a reminder, that, that solves the puzzle just fine. I want to try one more thing here, but just as a reminder, what we're doing here is, is pretty interesting. Uh, we wrote a function solve stair that, among other things, calls a function turn around that we wrote ourselves up here. Okay? And this is not, you know, limited to two levels deep. We could have a function called solve stair that called a function turn around that called another function turn left that called another function and so on and so on we can do this as deep really as we'd like to okay so that's a, a very powerful uh, very powerful idea okay i want to try one other thing here this is just a little tip for ways to think about things in the future you may get stuck on uh, problems like this from time to time so I want to give you maybe an idea on how it, it may have been easier to solve this problem. All right, so I'm going to run solve stair again, uh, just to remind what we've done here. So there's solve stair. He goes up. He comes down. And now he's facing away from where he came from. Now I want to actually think about this idea of maybe what the situation is before we call our function and what the situation is after we call our function. All right. In this case, before we called our function, we were facing the stair. After we called the function, we're facing away from the stair. Now I wonder what 
this uh, writing our main program would look like had we instead of had we taken a little bit more care when we wrote the function solve stair to say you know maybe I want not only do I want to go up the stair collect the gem and come back down but I want to make sure that when I come back down I'm facing the stair I just solved okay so when I come back down I want to be facing the the stair I just solved so how could we do that well uh, inside solve stair we want to do mainly the same things we want to move forward because we're facing the stair we want to collect the gem then we want to turn around and come back down the stair but then at the end let's go ahead and add one more thing another turn around another turn around that should end end him up after he calls solve stair facing the stair he just cleaned up so let's try this and make sure that works up the stair collect gem turn around back down the stair this time he's going to turn around so he's facing the facing the uh, gem that he started with okay now I think from this point had we thought about how are we going to solve this problem we most certainly would have not have turned all the way around to go get the gem behind us we probably would have realized oh this is not too difficult let's turn left or right and pick up the gem uh, to our left or right okay so uh, I'll go ahead and, and solve this from this point on solve stair and then we're going to say uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn right this time okay let's solve the next stair the one that's uh, to our right right now then let's turn right and now we'll be facing the stair that's directly behind us let's solve that stair and let's turn right one more time and solve the stair that will be directly in front of us that's this one right on the left here all right I'm gonna run this fast now because I'm pretty sure this is gonna work moves up the stair solves it comes back down and turns around so he's facing that stair now he turns right and he does the same thing so the abstract idea about solving a stair now includes making sure that he ends up in the same position he was when he started. I think that makes it easier to solve this problem. Okay. Uh, now, the big question is, is this method a little faster or a little slower than the one we did the first time? It's a little slower, isn't it? It's a little slower, but it did end up making it a little faster to solve, okay? Uh, faster to solve, meaning faster for us to think of a solution, okay? Uh, so that's something, I think, that's worth thinking about. You don't always have to go for the very fastest solution. Uh, that means the very fastest uh, solution that Byte will choose. Sometimes it's okay to say, you know, if I find it easier to think of a, of a way to solve a problem in a certain way even though it may not be the fastest that's okay and even more importantly if when I wrote the, write the code it's a little easier for me to understand let's say I go away from this code for a couple of months and I come back to it when I read it I can look at this code right here and say ah okay He's going to solve the stair in front of him, then he's going to turn right. Solve the stair in front of him, turn right. Solve the stair in front of him, turn right. Solve the stair in front of him. That reads very clearly for me. It may not be the very fastest version uh, to execute uh, our procedure, but it is very fast for me to pick it up, understand it, and make any modifications I need to. All right? Okay, good. Again, a reminder, the most important point about this lesson is that we have functions that we write. Sometimes they call other functions that we write. And sometimes those functions call other functions that we write and so on. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next time.